Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Whitevale, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out a 2024 Ram 1500 Crew Cab four-wheel drive Bighorn trim with the Night Edition package. This vehicle sitting on 275 55 Bridgestone tires wrapped around 20 inch alloy wheels with a matte black finish. It also has four wheel disc brakes with the ventilated rotors on all four wheels. We're going to look at the window sticker when we get to the end of the video, but I just want to point out this one has the upgraded Hemi 5.7 liter V8 with the e torque system. The name of this color is Bright White Clear Coat, and it's basically just a regular white color. Uh, there's nothing special about the the white it's not like a pearl coat or anything like that so here in the front uh it has since it has that night edition uh, it has black a lot of gloss black in contrast with the white kind of looks good but there's a lot of gloss black on the vehicle so here on the upper portion of the grill is a gloss black right in here but then here in the main part in the center of the grill is a matte black so you can see a little bit of a contrast there The Ram emblem is blacked out there in the center. Then you have some matte black portions there at the bottom with the parking sensors and the fog lights as well. Little housings there are, are matte black. And the headlight housings are also a gloss black. Now the headlights on this vehicle are halogen. Uh, so it's low high beams, everything is uh, halogen bulbs and a reflector housing. Now these can be upgraded. You can just, there is a direct replacement for LEDs uh, to put in those housings if you want, uh, but it comes with the halogen bulbs. Looking at the profile of the vehicle, you can see it has the gloss black handles, side mirrors, gloss black as well there on the top, and then it has a matte black uh, pillar there in the center and a privacy glass there in the back. If you go ahead and tint the front glass, it'll solidify all that stuff. Uh, so this is the crew cab. Uh, so it has the, the larger door there in the bottom and you also have the blacked out uh, badge there as well, uh, the Ram name on the side. This is what the key looks like, and it's really nice key. Uh, it feels good, it feels quality. It has a little bit of size to it, but it's not very heavy at all, actually. Uh, it has the lock, unlock, the remote start buttons, and a panic button here. And just overall looks so nice. It does have a physical key on the inside as well, in case you need it. Uh, but yeah, really nice looking key. And the way it works is, on this particular one, uh, it has just lock and unlock um, as far as you, you have to use the remote, you know. Uh, it doesn't have uh, the controls here on the, on the handle. So there's no like touch sensitive or lock or unlock here on the handle. Uh, you just use the remote here to lock and unlock the door. Then there's a physical key location here on the driver's side only. Now these doors go almost all the way to the bottom of the vehicle. Uh, it covers up most of the threshold area here, keeping it relatively clean. So when you're getting in and out, does it get you dirty? Uh, so here's the inside of the passenger door, mostly black interior, but we do have some really cool accents. Right here is a black cloth, and this kind of looks like a, a wood or a carbon fiber type look is what it's going for. Not exactly, uh, doesn't really stand out much, but really it, when you actually get your eye on it, it looks really nice. Uh, this is soft touch up here. This is soft touch. The rest of the door is a hard touch here and here. This is open here, and then it goes into this pocket. Uh, so you can like literally stand something in there. It's just pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this storage pocket right here, and then large pockets there at the bottom. Very ergonomic, just right there where your hand would be, and plenty of space. Uh, really, I think Ram does a really good job of designing the ergonomics and the just the overall design of the vehicle for usability. Uh, the jack for the spare tire is underneath the seat right here. You just remove, pop this cover off and you'll be able to get to it. Manually adjust the seats here on the passenger side. And man, Ram's always done a, always done a great job as far as comfort and, uh, and everything. Sitting in these seats feels like a very comfortable chair. And of course, the seating position is quite high off the floor, so it does feel like you're in a chair. Uh, so this one has the rubber mats here, snap in place. Kind of catch all the mud or whatever. I highly recommend these type of mats, especially in the truck. And it has this pocket here on the side. It's kind of like a uh, a mail envelope uh, stuff where you can put, it's designed to where you can fit a full size file folder uh, in that compartment. But you know, it's really handy to just kind of like put some papers or whatever in there, whatever you got to do. 
Uh, this is a hard touch surface here, here, lockable glove compartment. It has smooth plastic on the inside. And it's not the biggest glove compartment in the world, but it is pretty decent. But you do have a second glove compartment here. Uh, so having additional space, and this is like it goes down and it's kind of flat here. So you can kind of put some stuff in there a lot easier than say, um, you know, these kind of like, you can, it's not really like you can stack stuff uh, as, as easy as you can here. It's kind of out of sight as well. But it's really easy to access. And also you can leave it open. Uh, one good thing about this compartment is you can leave it open if you want. So if there's stuff that you need to access regularly, uh, you can just go ahead and leave that open and you can get to it easy. And also you can see it and it'll remind you to get it, that kind of thing. Now you notice there's handles on all four doors. So there's in the back door, even the driver's side has a handle there for helping you get in and out of the vehicle. Uh, it has a hard touch dash, non-reflective. It's hard to imagine somebody too big for this truck. Uh, getting in and out of this truck is lots of headroom. Real easy to just get right in, uh, especially if you're tall, you know, you can get right on in there. Uh, of course, you can add a step. If you're not super tall, you can get in there a little bit easier. But the opening of the door is really nice here in the front, but also here in the back. It's even some degree better here in the back as far as the opening, getting in and out, because not only do you have passengers go in and out of this area, you can also use this as a cargo space, and I'll show you how in a second. Uh, but the swing of the door is made for that. So it has almost a 90 degree angle swing on the door to get it out of the way, so you can utilize this area uh, a little bit better. So we have the same, similar styling here in the back. Uh, they're not skimping on anything. You have that carbon fiber tech or wood or whatever going right here, cloth. Then you have that like metallic bezel there, soft touch surfaces, you got stitching, compartments, everything just like the front. So it's not like it's uh, minimized, minimizing your features here in the back just because it's the back door. Plenty of room. And then basically it's a bench seat back here. It does have the latch system for car seats, easy to get to. Uh, so there's the latches, the, the bottom uh, anchors there, but then there's a top anchor uh, right here. So it's like a strap going on there. And then the headrest can be folded down or removed, depending on your needs. Armrest with cup holders here. That lifts up. So you can see it's, it's not super contoured seat. It's more flat, so you can get in and kind of slide over real easy. And once again, we do have roomy, comfortable seats back here as well. There's the handle. There's pockets on the back of each front seat, and it's very soft in there, for felt lined, whatever. So you can just put a tablet or something that's fragile in there, and it'll cradle it for you. And then there is the... Uh, USB ports here, USB-C and USB-A charge ports, a little storage pocket right in here. And then there's a spot for a, uh, like a power inverter there. Just, this one doesn't have it. Uh, it does have the climate control vents, cup holders here that's utilized. You can utilize those um, from the front or the back. Uh, so you can kind of share those cup holders. But you notice that the floor, uh, this compartment kind of like gets out of the way of the floor. Look how much room we have on this floor. We also have under seat storage as well. So we have room under the seat to put stuff. Uh, we also have a compartment under here. So we lift this up and we can open up the compartment on both sides and it has a little bin inside this removable. You can clean it, put it back in. Uh, but yeah, really nice under floor storage, under seat storage, uh, completely flat floor for a cargo area. So we can lift this these seats up. And it's real easy. There's no like latches or anything. You just kind of lift it up and they stay in place. And you don't have to pull any straps or handles or anything like that to pull them down. You just grab it and pull it down and they stay in place. So when they're up, look how much room we have back here. We could put a huge box. Let's say we'll go to uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or something and we get a huge, uh, you know, a, like a like a dryer or something, we can put it in here. Instead of putting it in the back of the truck, let's say it's raining, let's say it is, you know, you just want to secure whatever you have, uh, this compartment here 
this back seat area is also a back cargo area and it's very substantial uh, especially the height the width everything and having that flat floor is excellent and real easy to access it you just flip the seats up flip them down it's very easy and it's a 60 40 split so we can still have uh, some passenger space while still pay maintaining uh, we can have cargo space while still maintaining passenger space is what i'm getting uh, so yeah very versatile uh, we also have hooks here so if you want to hang something there you can do that it's one on each side and one the good thing about this having these hooks here on the side instead of the back so some trucks have them back here is that you you hang some let's say you're hanging clothes or whatever here on the back uh it just covers up the back glass and it, it makes it harder to see have them here on the side uh, it's not as big a deal we have some speakers here back here as well taking a look at the back of the vehicle you can see it has the shark fin antenna here at the top matte black sticks up quite a bit and then you have the cargo lights here third brake light at there at top of the glass you have a sliding rear glass as well power sliding rear glass and here on the back uh, it has a lot of gloss and a matte black this ram emblem kind of three-dimensional sticking out looking pretty cool And then there's the handle. Now, it, you notice there's the lights here. Uh, but this handle is electronic, and it has the backup camera. And you notice the backup camera position is in a high, fairly high, and in this very center. So it's like a perfect position for the backup camera. Um, but also have the badging that's blacked out. Even the, the exhaust tips are blacked out down here. Looking pretty cool. Parking sensors back here as well. Uh, there's also a class four trailer hitch with the four and seven way outlets here. And they're above the bumper level. Uh, so they stay relatively clean, a little bit easier to get to. So you're not like laying on the ground trying to plug in your trailer. And what's cool about this, uh, this tailgate is you press the button, you just let go of it because it has a soft landing really nice and now it's super easy to lift up i mean it's not heavy at all um like it's like very very simple the way it's designed uh it's assisted fairly light even ram even before they had the uh, the assisted tailgate it was easy to open and close it was so light feeling uh the way they designed it so you'll notice that this bed does not have any kind of uh bed liner or spray in bed liner or anything like that and uh so we get a look at a little bit better here as far as the design of the vehicle so you can see the tie downs there in the back and the front those are fixed tie downs and of course you can add uh, additional ones if you wanted to there's tons of accessories for ram now the reason why uh, this doesn't have the any kind of bed liner spray in is usually recommended uh, the dealer here van van underwood uh, said that the Spray and bed liners are kind of slowing down. Like if you order a truck, it takes longer to get it if you order that. So he's uh, going without it right now and just having them sprayed here locally. Uh, but yeah, this bed is, uh, I believe it's the five foot seven inch bed. Um, and of course you have the tailgate here. You also have the uh, be bed extender um, options and, and different things like that as well. But yeah, very useful bed huge <laughs> and like i said it's very easy to just lift this tailgate up fuel door is here on the driver's side and it's no cap uh, you will need to use a funnel which it does come with the funnel um, if you need to use like a gas can or something but as far as going to the gas station you just put the nozzle in there pump your gas and you don't have to worry about a cap being loose or losing the cap or anything like that it does have a seal right around here uh, it also is a this is kind of rubber this is a rubber seal here as well with a little drain outlet there as long as you have the key inside the vehicle to start it up you just press and hold the brake and push this button here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat and basically the same type of floor mat that snaps in place and then there's the accelerator brake pedal and there's a foot left uh, rest there on the far left this whole, whole area basically is a footrest here. 
take a look under the hood. To raise the hood, very easy. There's a latch right here in the very center. Uh, you just reach in and move it to the left. So you just pretty much see it now because of the angle of the sun. Uh, move it to the left and then lift up slightly on the hood. You can see it doesn't take much effort to lift it up. And it goes up the rest of the way by itself. There's the latch here and this is what we're doing with it. See, very easy. It has a seal all the way across the front. Uh, there's seals there in the back as well. There's a lot of insulation here in the engine compartment. Insulation on the battery, the firewall. There's the air cleaner. Uh, so yeah, this one has the 5.7 liter uh, V8 with the eight speed automatic transmission. Uh, it's a ZF torque flight automatic transmission. The Hemi, the 5.7 liter V8, has been around a while. It's renowned, you know, the, the Hemi. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with the Hemi V8. Uh, but one of the things that they've, RIM has introduced here recently uh, is the e-torque. So you can see this box right here. It looks like an alter alternator. It actually replaces uh, the alternator. And it has this massive belt on it. And basically what it does it serves as a the ability to save energy while you're coasting or idling. Uh, you come to a complete stop or something like that. It it it's like a generator and it generates electricity for a battery. Uh, so when the battery builds up that charge while you're driving, just kind of naturally the the way it works, uh, then it helps you add torque when you need it to the engine. It adds torque to the engine using this this motor right here is this it's a generator and a motor all in all in one uh, and it will get, add torque for acceleration it adds torque for towing uh, it also helps you save fuel um, by when you're turning the engine off uh, when you're idling uh, that kind of stuff so you just turn it just turns the engine off and then it restarts it really quick you can't even notice it so it's pretty amazing uh, how it works uh, so it saves fuel it adds torque uh, all by using the excess energy that you would normally waste by uh, coasting or or sitting still uh, you know basically it, it store has a battery stores the energy that's typically wasted and then tries to use that energy uh, for you know the torque and also fuel savings the driver's side door is just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons uh, so you can see the door locks here, power windows. The front two are automatic, one touch up and down. And they are, they are laminated glass up here. Um, one touch up and down. And then there's the side mirrors adjusted here with a power fold feature. So you can press that and fold them in. And they are uh, auto dim here on the driver's side, auto dim side mirror, heated as well. driver's seat it's not manual it's power you know always the the driver's seat usually one ups the passenger seat so you can go you can go up down tilt tilt the back and then a two-way lumbar adjustment as well so yeah these are really nice uh these so this is cloth seats of course and very comfortable not rough or anything nice and comfortable uh smooth has a little bit of a pattern there but yeah ram does a great job with their seats To the left of the steering column is the electronic parking brake. So in in previous generations, they had the parking brake as a foot brake down here, but now it's electronic. You also have the ability to pull in, uh, lower and raise your the pedals. The accelerator and brake pedal, you can raise them and lowering them. Uh, so that way when you get the seat positioned, if the pedals just don't feel right, you can position and adjust those as well. There's the dim, the uh, headlight switch that has automatic headlights on, parking, and then headlights off. This is for your fog lights, and this is for your cargo lights. This is the dimmer switch for the interior gauges. Then it has a tilt and a telescoping steering column. And while we're looking at the steering column, there's some buttons right here I want to show you. And I'll show you that when we get inside uh, what they do. But there's buttons on both sides of the steering wheel where it's up down in the center button here i'm sitting in the driver's seat and have the driver's seat all the way back and all the way down to give you an idea of the potential legroom here 
So yeah, it's a little bit too far back for me to drive. I'm six feet tall. And yeah, it's just a little bit too far back. I mean, I could prop potentially uh, drive like this, but uh, if you're over six feet tall, should have no problem with finding a comfortable seating position and having plenty of room, basically. You have adjustable pedals, you got adjustable seat, you got a uh, telescoping steering column. So yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good as far as that goes. Uh, so the steering wheel, very soft and comfortable. It doesn't, it's kind of rubbery soft, where if you grip it too hard, you kind of, kind of does it hurt your hands. <laughs> uh, so yeah, really comfortable steering wheel. Thickens up here at the bottom. Uh, the thickness is good too. It kind of thins here at the top. It gives kind of variable thicknesses here. Uh, so, so yeah, really nice. So there's buttons here on the back of the steering wheel like I showed you on the other side. It's up, down, and then a center button. The up and down here on the right side is the volume, the center button for the radio, and then the center button is for the audio source. On the left side, the up and down is changed to the tracks or radio station depending on where you're at. Uh, and then the center button um, is for the presets on the radio only. Here on the front, it has a gear limit uh, so you can increase or decrease your gear limit. So if you need to downshift for uh, engine braking, that kind of thing, you can do that here. And then you have the cruise control, turn it on, set either here or here, change to the speeds here, resume and cancel. So very straightforward as far as the cruise control, no adaptive cruise control or anything like that. Here on the left side, it has the uh, voice recognition button and then your Bluetooth phone so you can answer and then hang up. So I like the way it has separate buttons. They're also color coded as well. Uh, so you have a separate separate button for hanging up uh, instead of having a single button for both. And then these buttons right here, um, I like the way they're kind of contoured so you can kind of feel them. You don't have to really, anyways, you don't have to necessarily look at them, but you can kind of feel them. These correspond with the screen here. We'll get to that in a minute. It has okay and then the arrows. Uh, the turn signal and windshield wipers are here on the left side. And check out this gauge cluster. Man, it is, is it nice? A little bit of a glare. It's picking up on camera. I don't see it with my eyes, but uh, it's kind of picking it up here. But yeah, this is really nice. So we have the RPMs here on the left, engine cooling temperature. On the right side is a speedometer and fuel gauge. And it shows a little arrow next to the pump showing you which side the fuel uh, uh, fuel uh, door is on. Uh, but you notice the center area, has, right below the ram, this whole area right here is, even these little corners, uh, they are uh, basically part of the screen. So right now it's showing a digital compass, it's showing the battery level. Uh, here on the top right is the outside temperature, and this is the uh, oil pressure. Uh, but you can customize the screen. And using these buttons on the steering wheel, remember the OK, and the arrows, uh, we'll get the, have a nice big digital speedometer in the middle, and it has like this textured background, looking really nice. So if we scroll up and down, you know, you'll notice that it's part of a menu system. The, that speedometer is part of a menu. Uh, so we can scroll down. Um, here on the, the speedometer part, there's no left and right selections, but if we scroll down to vehicle info, we can go left and right, and we get more information under the vehicle info uh, title. And we get quite a bit of information here. It goes back to the beginning, scroll down again, fuel economy, and we have two independently resettable uh, fuel economy trip. So we could keep track of our, our, rain, our, our fuel economy and then our range and all that stuff here. Next one down will be our trip info. And trip is pretty good because you have trip A and trip B, reset those independently. Uh, and then it keeps track of your miles per gallon here as well. So your time, your miles per gallon, and your trip. And you can have two of them so you can reset them for whatever reason you want to keep track of two different things at the same time. Like a sub trip or a, uh, a larger trip, that kind of thing. Scrolling down again, showing the status of the stop start feature. Right now I have it turned off. Uh, the next one will be your trailer tow information. Right now there's no information on that because we don't have a trailer tow, uh, a trailer connected or anything. Uh, and there's the trailer brake gain control. Like once again, we're not connected. But you notice when I'm not moving anything, you notice the digital speedometer just moves up there. So it's, that's where it'll be when you're not on the main screen. Next one down will be your audio, just whatever your radio is doing. Scrolling down again will be any stored messages. 
like hey it's time to change the oil that kind of stuff next one would be in your screen setup so we can go in here uh, let's go ahead and press ok see upper left upper right lower left lower right uh, we can go in there we'll go to upper left this one and you notice it highlights it uh, we'll select that right now it's set to compass we can have outside temperature time range to empty uh, average fuel economy current fuel economy and then trip a and trip b distance oil pressure oil temperature battery voltage transmission temperature coolant temperature trailer trip trailer break oil life or nothing there so let's go ahead and change it to the time because i like to see what time it is so there we go so yeah that's how you can customize each one of those corners there and get what you want instead of uh you know just you know or nothing you can have just nothing there if you if you want all right so let's go down so now we're back to the large easy to read visual speedometer so yeah i think that it did a really good job of having a a screen that gives you a lot of information while also pleasing the people that like regular uh gauges as well all right we saw the start button here's the shifter and the shifter is non-traditional because it is a knob. You turn the knob and change to the gears. So it's electronic, uh, like most vehicles anyway. So that frees up this whole area. You don't have to have a shifter that's moving around, a, a physical, you know, like shifter when it's not, it's gonna be electronic anyway. So this get, gets it completely out of the way. It's very simple. Uh, so you have park, reverse, neutral, and drive. Uh, just put your foot on the brake, turn it, turn it turn it very simple rubberized knob easy to grip it easy to grip with gloves on or whatever too as well and when we put it in reverse good look at the uh, backup camera here look really nice it has the active guidelines we can see the bumper to the sky um, all around and if the way this vehicle is equipped it just has that one camera but if you had other cameras on the vehicle you would have access to change your views here also, your parking sensors will activate as well, and they'll show a little visual indicator here on the screen. And uh, so, yeah, if there's anything close to the vehicle, it'll kind of beep at you and show you front or back what it's talking about. It'll highlight it. All right. So, yeah, very simple shifter. And this is your, once again, simple four-wheel drive controls. It's two-wheel drive, uh, and then you have four-wheel drive auto, and then four-wheel drive high, and then four-wheel drive low, and you also have neutral for flat towing as well. And the stop start feature we can turn that on or off here and that's the off but off light so default is on so we turn it on it, it's default on when you start the vehicle but you press the button uh, to turn it off so that's the off light all right so we have a lot of physical buttons around the screen here there's also a compartment here at the top with a 12 volt power supply convenient for radar detectors and stuff little little rubberized compartment there and also this you see that has like a battery on it on the 12 volt power supply uh, because it's connected to the battery uh, you don't have to turn the vehicle on in order to that for that to be on four-way flashers are here we have te temperatures for the driver and passenger for climate controls fan speed where you want the air to blow automatic function recirculate the air front and rear defrosters all that there on the sides you have a physical volume knob, physical knob for changing through the stations as well. We also have a mute button that's easy to get to, um, and then a screen off button. If we would just want to turn the screen off, we could do that as well. There's the trailer brake gain control to actual uh, set it here. And we saw the, the, the settings on the screen as well. Uh, traction control off is here. Default is on, and then once again, this is the off button. Trailer tow. Parking sensors off front front and rear. So if you want the default is on, but if you want to turn it off, you can do it here. And once again, we have off lights. Okay, so let's turn the screen back on. And hopefully we don't have any glares or anything. Uh, but the way the screen is, we have, can pull from the top. Whatever we're screen we're in, we can pull from the top and we can get information here. Uh, so we have, these are kind of like shortcuts. Well, actually, yeah, they are short, shortcuts. I like the way it has the date there as well, the time, the outside temperature, different information. We also have, um, on this particular vehicle, it has the heated seat and heated steering wheel. Okay, so hopefully you can see this a little bit better. Um, so yeah, it's a three-stage heated seat, 
and an on and off heated steering wheel. And the passenger seat, uh, heated seat, you can control here. And then once again, three stage heated seat. All right, uh, rear cam. We can actually look at the backup camera without putting in a reverse, which is handy. So yeah, this pull down menu is really convenient, but these are just additional places. Uh, so we have the, the actual main function of the screen are these buttons here. So we have the home button, media, comfort, navigation, phone, vehicle, and then we have apps here at the, uh, there on the right side. So the home button will be like a split screen. So right now it's showing the navigation map and then it's showing uh, the, whatever the radio is doing here. Now we can edit pages here. So if we want to add a page, we can add a page. So we can have a different layout. So if we want to have it in four sections, two sections, three sections, whatever we want to do it. So yeah, we have a customizable uh, home screen. We have the next one is media here on the bottom. So this is whatever the radio is doing. We have AM, FM, satellite radio, uh, different audio sources right here. So there's AM, FM, satellite radio, Bluetooth, USB 1, USB 2, Alexa, and an auxiliary input. We also have Bluetooth uh, here as well in which we can have the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto uh, once we pair our devices. We have album art and presets there at the bottom. We can direct tune, which is convenient for satellite radio. There's so many channels. All right, the next one will be a comfort. So this will be a little bit of a redundancy uh, where we have some climate control and heated seat controls here as well. Navigation map is here. And we can have the 3D or top-down view. And the, the orientation of the screen is convenient because it actually since it's this way, uh, it gives us more distance in front of us to see as far as the way the layout of the road as we're driving. Uh, either way, whether it be the, we can have north go up, we can have 3D, have different views like that. 3D is pretty cool. And then we can do a search, find addresses, uh, add, favorites, that kind of thing. We can search for gas stations, uh, that food, that kind of stuff. Yeah, really nice. All right, next one here is phones. Uh, so once you pair your phone, uh, you'll have access to everything here. Uh, you have your contacts, recent calls, and all that stuff. You, can, you prioritize them as well. So I think you can have up to six phones paired and then it'll, it'll be like a priority one one will be a priority over the other so you can prioritize them the vehicle so if you have different drivers basically uh, so then you have the dimmer for the, the the rear view mirror you can turn that feature on or off and then the rear view camera um, we could just look at it here it's just another like, like I said a little bit of redundancy here you have the dashboard and then the settings here uh, so this will be the dashboard uh, settings and then this will be uh, the other settings here. So display, we're going to adjust this, have different profiles, driver assistance, adjust the clock, uh, adjust Bluetooth settings here, voice recognition, uh, navigation settings, trailer, camera, mirrors and wipers, lights, brakes, doors and locks, seats and comfort, key off options, audio, notifications, a lot of different um, different options here. So yeah, it's uh, it's very exhaustive. It's one of those things you want to set it up first. Get the vehicle. Most of those settings, you you just set it up the way you want it, and you, you have, never have to really mess with it again. But yeah, that's kind of a quick rundown of how the screen works and how to navigate through it. Uh, and then you should kind of set it up and customize it the way you want. So below all this stuff here, we have some USB and auxiliary inputs here. USB-C, USB-A, uh, really easy to get to. There's also this little compartment right here. I got my business card in there so you can see how deep it is. And it's a rubber lined, so you can take this rubber bottom out, clean it, put it back in. And then this is a place, let me go ahead and pull this back. This is slideable. Uh, this is a spot in which you can stand up a cell phone. It has like this little pressure area right here so you can stand it up and it kind of stands up in this area and there's a place right there for a wire to come out uh, to plug it in if you need to and then it wraps around and there's some cable management here on this side and this side so you can plug it in if you need to and it has places for two phones and below that once again we have another one of my business cards here there's this this compartment goes in there a little ways that way 
and it's huge, massive compartment here. And it's rubber lined at the bottom, so things aren't sliding around as easy. There's also a 12 volt power supply here. Uh, no, this is a, sorry, this is the power inverter. So it's a three prong power inverter. And it is 400 watts, 115 volt, 400 watt power inverter. All right, this slides forward and back like this. And we're, when, when you have it in place, it's very solid. It's not rattling. It's not going to be sliding around on you, getting in the way. Even if you don't have it in the lock position, even if it's between the lock positions, just kind of there, it's very solid. So it's not going to be slopping around or anything like that. Then you got your cup holders. You have these little pressure points here to accommodate for different size bottles and cups. It's open in the center. The bottom part is rubberized here on both sides even in the center here as well. All this area is rubberized. Uh, and then there's a place to put some coins, which is pretty cool. Another large area, quick, more quick access area here. And this is rubberized here as well. So we can slide that forward and back. And then we have the armrest here. We saw the cup holders from the back seat. But this is the view from the front seat, and also you could put a tablet right in here. And uh, so, yes, yeah, these cup holders are used, can be used from the back or the front. These are the front. Armrest here is super soft, big enough to share with the passenger, I think, uh, unless you're really, you know, really greedy on that, that comfort there. Uh, and then this part lifts up in two places. So the upper portion here is uh, a smaller area. This have a rubber mat here, and... It has a place to put wires in and out of the compartment right here. So it's a little tiny bit of a little catch, a little cable management catch there. Because uh, it does have a USB port there in the back. But you notice where that USB port is. There's no cover or anything. So when you lift this up, that's the next compartment. When you lift that up, if there's any kind of dirt, dust, or debris, or, or anything here, it could potentially go inside that USB port. So it's a good idea to buy a cover and put it on there and, and just cover up that USB port when you're not using it. Uh, they sell little uh, little covers that you can buy separately, but it doesn't just have one automatically, unfortunately. Okay, so this lifts up, uh, and we have this kind of like measurements and different little cheat code, little cheat sheet under here. Uh, so when you're working, if you need that, you can use that. Pretty cool. Uh, and then we have this, the, uh, the continuation of this large compartment. So this slides back and forth. Uh, but underneath it is a huge compartment like it, it's completely open in the bottom and you see this area right here is wide open now it has this little this little uh, raised part right here so if you put something here it's not going to slide forward and if you have a larger object this little thing here pops up this pops up like that and then you can stop things from going forward and keep it in this back compartment so it's kind of like a divider in a way um, for that purpose. So yeah, very, very interesting and useful center console area. Um, I think it's well designed, especially if you get used to it. You can have everything in, in this little place and you can access things uh, really easily. So there's a rear view mirror, auto dim, auto dimming rear view mirror. And when you can turn that feature on and off in the settings there. And when it auto dims, it also auto dims the side mirror on this side as well, not the passenger side, just the driver's side. And you have a place to put your shades or safety glasses here. It is felt lined and pretty good size. So you can put pretty much anything in there as far as glasses, big Hollywood glasses if you want. And then it has roadside assistance, emergency buttons here as well. It does have its own cellular connection that's separate from your cell phone. So it can actually uh, connect to like emergency services and stuff. Now it has, this is the sliding glass there in the back. We'll look at that in a minute. And then you have buttons here quick access reading buttons, all the enter lights all off or have them turn on with the door here in the center uh, place there. And there's a little bit of an ambient light right here that shines at nighttime, illuminating the center area of the vehicle. Just a little bit of extra light there. The visors are a cloth material, kind of matches this. It's actually a little bit rougher feeling than the headliner. Maybe it's the same, it's hard to tell. Uh, but it is matching the color and material. It is a, uh, a cloth and then there's a little clip right here Has a mirror with lights once again once again halogen lights interesting We have home link garage door opener controls here as well here on the other side uh, And then these do slide out on a metal rod They slide over 
so you can adjust them. Looking at the visibility here in the back, uh, I have one headrest down in the back and one up. So, so you can see how much of a difference that makes. So if you don't need, if you have passengers back there, you can lower those headrests. You get a little bit better visibility back there. And as far as the side here, plenty, looks really nice. Uh, and then you got the big glass there in the back and you know, overall nice. I mean, it has the nice camera system and parking sensors and all that too as well to help you drive the vehicle safely. Also, there is the kind of like secondary uh, mirror there. So you have the main mirror and then a little secondary wide angle mirror as well, helping with your visibility. All right, so um, let's look at the window sticker and I'm gonna have this in the video at the end in more detail and also the, the description as well. So. You see it just says Bighorn Crew Cab, 1500. Uh, but this one is the night edition, so it has this package right here. Bighorn Package uh, 27Z, night edition. Uh, so the way the, 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 way the, the, the Ram window sticker is, it gives you the base price, then it gives you the, the optional, the, the engine, the transmission, the colors, the stuff here. Then standard equipment starts here, and it continues on. And optional equipment. This is where the, the optional packages, like the additional money that they're going to add to the vehicle, uh, starts there and continues on. And, and it may be uh, be different than your than your standard equipment. So it might add to and replace the standard equipment. So even if it's listed here, it doesn't mean that's the be all end all. It's probably re replaced by a package here. So in this case, you have the uh, upgraded uh, Alpine sound system. You have the the wheels upgraded, the engine, and all that stuff upgraded. Uh, so yeah, so you have the different prices there as well with the total price, and it has the warranty information, fuel economy information, uh, safety scores, and where the vehicle has been, uh, where it's made and where the parts are produced, that kind of thing. So anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you to Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Jod Ram here in Whiteville, North Carolina. I'll have their website and information in the description. Thank you for watching. Thank you for them, to them for providing the vehicle, and I'll see you guys next time.